Hello, my beautiful and incisive friends. Welcome back to Alien Protocols. We're going to be diving into some fringe physics right here and some real edge science. And a lot of it may just seem like gobbledygook. But inside this area, obviously, is some new physics and mysteries and amazing new possibilities. Let's start with uh, Malcolm Bendel's Thunderstorm Generator, which has been getting a lot of attention lately. It has been uh, built and talked about by numerous really respected, powerful intellects. And they have built a model, a prototype, so far that has produced some really bizarre uh, phenomena and some really interesting phenomena. Ball lightning, plasmoids, uh, ENCs, EV exotic vacuum objects, um, Hutchison effect aspects. And they're talking about things like black holes and white holes and transmutation of metals and all sorts of effects. But first, let me just kind of explain to you what this machine is. It's called a thunderstorm generator, which is a very glorified kind of way of saying it's a kind of boosted up Van de Graaff generator, essentially. Let me show you what a Van de Graaff generator is. <clears throat> a Van de Graaff generator is like this. This is the bottom. I just, uh, the bottom is a plug in a cord, okay? There's a cord. Okay, and there's this tube, a plastic tube, a bottom, a metal sphere on the top, and inside this tube, there's a giant rubber band that goes around these two rollers. And both the rubber band and the rollers are insulators. So as they come apart and touch in places like right here and right here, they create static electricity. And it is generated more and more as it's turned. And how it's uh, drained and how it seeks equilibrium is there's these little brushes right here and those little brushes take the charge off and put it on this ball. And the reason why it's a ball is it has so much surface. A sphere is perfect for this because the charge all goes to the surface. Now, if something gets too close and interferes, the static can jump. It can jump from here to all sorts of different places. But this is essentially what happens. And it can create lightning bolts and little static electricity charges. It's different than... A Tesla coil, which I'll do a quick little example of here. A Tesla coil basically steps up energy, kind of. It takes some wider and fewer copper wires and ties them on the bottom of, let's say, a pole, and then has many more smaller ones uh, wound up to a top. And now the top, you could use a sphere, but there's all sorts of other things you can do at the tip of a Tesla coil. And what happens with the Tesla coil is uh, it takes the energy and steps it up to a higher frequency. So uh, you can create lightning bolts and some very impressive ones indeed. So anyway, let's go back to the thunderstorm generator and the Van de Graaff generator. So take a Van de Graaff generator like this and then... Put a shell around it. That, my friends, is essentially the thunderstorm generator. And what happens is, instead of, you know, zapping people or fingers or a light bulb will illuminate if you put it over here, instead they cover the internal metal ball with another sphere. And they give it a positive charge and of course, the sphere itself will have a negative charge. And what happens is the charge, once it builds up high enough, jumps across, pow, and creates an electrical discharge, an energy discharge. And these discharges have been leaving marks and elements on the outside where the... <clears throat> electrical vector potential and energy hits, there is carbon. 
there's a layer of carbon soot on the outside. And the outside of the inner sphere is really clean, but they're all pockmarked. The metal is pockmarked with bizarre little damages and indentations. And when they cut a piece of that outside sh uh, shield here, they saw all sorts of crazy marks and effects. And these effects were also very similar to the Hutchison effect. Now, I have several ideas on how to make this a lot better or higher energy, perhaps. We'll go into explaining some of this plasmoid physics and some of this other stuff in, in just a second, but I, I want to just throw out a couple more ideas for here. You could change this shape a little bit and you could even do something really interesting. If you scaled this up larger, you could take a laser, for example, okay? And have the laser fire from here to here or from the outside shell to the inside shell. And that might ionize a trail for the charge. So you can keep directing the charge and these lightning bolts to a specific place, to a specific target even, instead of just the outside. This adds an element of uh, able to test the effect on other metals and objects and things. I think it's a very crucial new angle. You can control the bolts. Very big deal. Uh, I also think if you put this inner area here in a ultra vacuum, I have a couple uh, new designs for ultra vacuums that are incredibly simple and I'm stunned they've never been done before because ultra, ultra vacuums are very difficult to uh, create because of tubes and seals and pumps and all this stuff. It, they all end up, you know, ultimately failing at some point. But the version that I have is actually incredibly uh, simple. But um, maybe I'll show that in a future video. So anyway, those are a couple ways just to make this thunderstorm generator even better. I love how it's called thunderstorm. It's just freaking static lightning bolts. But they can take this to the next level, I believe, with an ultra vacuum, with uh, lasers for directionality. I also think something wild and crazy. I wonder what would happen if you put silver dust in a kind of semi-gaseous form, would that create a superconductivity or uh, any effects that would be desirable? I thought that was interesting. I also had a few other ideas for the inside here in terms of some fractal shapes and patterns to put on it in order to induce a couple of effects. Um, constructive and destructive effects. Um, so let's go into this a little deeper. How could we make this even better? Well, I have an idea I've had for a while. Is take the same premise of a Van de Graaff generator. And instead of having just one of the rubber bands belts go around, you could have a whole series like a Matryuska Van de Graaff generator. And you'd have to worry about the charges leaping and all that stuff. You'd really have to be on the uh, tapping and draining of it. That would be more difficult. But then uh, after a stunning, incredibly close uh, UAP encounter with a CEO of a company after we were leaving Huntsville, Alabama, it's a famous story I've told quite a few times, uh, we were driving after these successful and fun experiments, driving north from Huntsville and a craft circled the truck. And it was so close and ridiculous. It, it flew out the driver's side door and paralleled us for a while. And uh, I've shown some of the pictures and a little bit of the videos from it. And he, of course, got the best video because he was the passenger and I was driving. Stunning experience. But f for the week after that, I for some reason, probably just inspired by seeing this, just awestruck by this technology that was just not even Black Project stuff. It was so wild and so, it just seemed like way beyond. 
the material itself was illuminated like it was light, blue light. You could see through aspects of it. It was just, it seemed like super advanced technology. Anyway, for that week afterwards, uh, over a hundred inventions just poured out of me and really simple ideas. I've spoken about some of these before and uh, I'm going to start showing more of these now. Um, there's one that has some interest now that is you know, moving along. That's a medical device that could really uh, be incredibly helpful. And uh, uh, it also will help uh, astronauts and sports figures as well. And it's a really cool idea. And the science behind it has been pretty strongly proven uh, through a few studies. Uh, and that's the invention that's moving the best right now. But here is another one where we take the premise of a Van de Graaff generator. And instead of doing it the old traditional boring way. Oh, let me see my little... It's the paper. Oh, did I lose it? Where is it? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't see it right now for some reason. So I'll just show you the more advanced version. Well, I had an idea of taking the same premise of the Van de Graaff generator, uh, and instead of having the belt be vertical like this, why not? have a disc of the rubber and the disc of the rubber rotates and you put another disc perhaps and between them you can put your rollers and there will be more contact you could have several rollers there will be more contact between the rubber band or the, the band and the the two different insulated uh, aspects, the band and the rollers. Now you can take that same premise. Uh, I'm going to kick myself in the butt because I can't find this schematic, but I'll show you now the next step. You can do a stack of these. It's a stack. I call it a samdograph. Um, I could break down the numbers, the name for you later, but essentially it's a stack of these uh, Van de Graaff generation uh, principles that are now turned into a horizontal, flat Van de Graaff generator. But not only just with one band, but with multiple bands, rollers, and tapping all along the way so you have your frequency really uh, well contained and you have any bleed effects of charge very well contained. So this uh, stacked Van de Graaff, I think, could produce a lot bigger charge than even a large... Uh, thunderstorm generator. What you could do is put a stack, a Sam de Graaff stack inside a pressurized uh, compartment, let's say. You could do an ultra vacuum in here. You could have all the charge and everything bled over and fed into an adjacent container, pressurized vacuum you would have the, a spark gap essentially a space between the two charges the positive and negative and you can put your targets right here and blast them with super static energy and i am certain when they do this they will find all sorts of the stuff that they were finding in uh, malcolm bindle's thunderstorm generator What's interesting is it's customizable. You can change the pressure and the charge. You can do the laser thing for, you know, ionizing the path and having it be directional. Very, very little interesting uh, 
idea I thought I would share with you guys. And the consequences of some of this high energy technology is in the future, in the near future, my friends, I'll give you a secret. In the near future, science will have metals that can become transparent. Transparent metals. You can have gases that become solid and then liquid. Imagine having solid gases, the value of that. The value of non-metallic conductors and resistors. Very interesting new aspects of matter. We know that all of those things I just mentioned exist because they exist inside our own planet, inside incredible temperatures. But things like metallic hydrogen, which is another example of a gas becoming a metal, we, can't, we have a great deal of difficulty doing that on the surface. But there are special ways to create these special element conditions. And those new configurations of elements from those conditions can be powerful tools for future innovation. So, what do you guys think about the thunderstorm generator? And the power of static electricity. Now, if you're really listening, you realize that static electricity is deeply involved in all of these bizarre electric phenomena, electromagnetic phenomena. Very fascinating aspect. Why does static electricity create these EVOs? Why is static more likely to create some of the more bizarre physical alterations of elements, transmutation, etc.? Very interesting stuff, guys. I am fascinated by it. I'm sorry I'm not a better physicist or chemist or engineer, but I hope you got some value out of this exploration more inventions to come.